Welcome back to the various types of anomalies on Earth's surface. Today we turn our attention to stone circles, walls, and geoglyphs. Uh, this video will cover some stone circles and walls, and then subsequent videos will cover more walls and geoglyphs. So uh, let's jump in. So here's the thumbnail, and uh, this is Rogim Hiri in Golan Heights area in Israel. And this is a pretty goofy looking place. And I'll go to the next slide and read you the conventional explanation. The mysterious site in the Golan, known as Rogim Hiri, uh, speculated that these stone circles constructed, okay, so 3150 to 2200 BC, so they're like 4,000 years old, or older, if my math is right, used as a ceremonial site, so it's always like ceremonial or symbolic or something like that, uh, that's not true in my opinion, uh, blah blah blah, burial cairn, cairn, they make up all these fancy words, for just these, uh, basically just variations on the same derpy rock patternation. Um, so cairn, tumulus, uh, all, all kinds of uh, weird, any, anything that's like a weird rock structure, um, it's, to me it's, it's all the same deal, just variations on the same thing. Um, and then the, the naming of these things is actually a way of potentially obscuring uh, the truth or making us feel like it's known or uh, uh, all wrapped up nice and neat in a bow and understood when it's really not or when it's really something else. Uh, the new theory links the circular structure to an ancient method of disposing of the dead. Does this look like an ancient method of disposing of the dead? I don't think so. Um, so let's go back to this first image and yeah, in the thumbnail, it's you may notice the the contrast is uh, better, and I sharpened it up a little bit just to make it pop a little bit. But here's the original image, and so let's point out all the different um, or tally up all the different uh, features we can here. So we have these little round things uh, or oval or oblong, oddly shaped, uh, random little tangents here. A little goofy little uh, leaves hanging off like kind of looks like it or I mean like subjectively uh, or just uh, miscellaneous little tags hanging off and we have random little compartments here like these compartments or um, let's see just uh, segments we have lines kind of going through, uh, and then of course we have these lines of, it's just stacked rocks basically. I think this is a person, so you get a sense of the size of it. So just uh, rows and columns of haphazard uh, stacked rock walls, uh, this one leading away from it, and uh, just a general uh, nonsense uh, parade. So, uh, to summarize uh, this example and pretty much all the examples I'll show in the rest of the video are um, non-functional. Uh, they're just made to look like they had some uh, alibi function or cover story function uh, when they were never really used for anything. Okay, so we've got this little random thing coming off here. So it's not quite accurate to call this a stone circle. Like where does the formation begin and end? Does it, is this the, the boundary of it? And then this is unrelated? Uh, I'm pretty sure that this is related. It's like stacked rock walls extending all off into the distance. So this is just one portion of a much larger thing. And then we've got different looks to the walls. We've got more uh, angular, uh, well-built ones right here. Could be multiple eras, historical eras or it could just be multiple styles by the same hand. Um, and this is a 
the rocks don't stack up very high. So I mean, like, what would the function of something that, like this be? Ancient method of disposing of the dead? Dude, you just bury people. <laughs> it's not that hard. Or just leave them. I mean, why wouldn't you just leave them? Okay, so this is what it looks like up close, and it's just stacked rocks, as you can see. Kind of, kind of big, some small, but I mean, not unmanageable. This guy could probably lift all of these by himself. So, uh, yeah, I'm not saying this could not have been done by uh, early man. I'm just saying, why would they have done it? I don't, I don't think they would have gotten up to something like this. Um, that's kind of a moot point, or like a beating a dead horse at this point. So, I don't, I don't really feel a need to debunk the conventional theory just because it's so. It's even more wacky than my unconventional theory, or not mine uh, exclusively, but the one I talk about. Um, okay, so good look at the walls here. Just low walls and uh, rock piles. And the rock itself, uh, I don't know, I'm 50-50, I guess, whether it's just whipped up uh, from scratch and placed here, or whether it's like recycled from here or from another area or from a previous site or something like that, or just they just grabbed it from some nearby cliffside and ground it up a little bit and plopped it here. Who knows? Uh, it doesn't really matter much to me at this point. Um, so this image, we get a decent look at this weird little tail coming off and these silly compartments not really adding up to much. So non-functional again, and then the I would say, again, very speculative, but uh, the trailing of these walls from this structure is like a, um, a hint or a clue, like just like leading off of, um, like letting you know that where this trail goes, uh, the artistry of this structure continues. So like we're looking at the rest of the landscape here and we notice, oh look, more stone walls. So uh, it's not as this, this is an isolated thing. This is just to maybe even exclusively to draw your attention to the larger landscape, which is um, bogus as well. So that could be. And this, uh, just one more look here. Just got a few different looks. And see, some of these ridges or uh, edges are higher than others, and you can make the case that some of the stones have been displaced over the ages, but uh, I think these little um, random rock piles are random by design, in my opinion, randomized in their height and their uh, placement and distribution and design, more or less. Here we see either a cow or a sheep or something like that. It's more in the background, uh, just for scale. So you get a sense of the size of this thing. So pretty darn wide. And then again, the, the things, the lines continuing off into the distance, lines of stone. And this is something we see uh, in many places, the, uh, the non-distinct boundary or uh, the, 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 the structure bleeds into the environment and continues into the environment and sometimes as the environment depending how you look at it so one more look here this is a good overhead here's a car so again the scale of it uh, and if it's four or five thousand years old what business do they have doing all this um, it's the why that's so perplexing and that that perplexing nature of the question is the answer the deliberate mystery or the um, even just the shock test or just just to mess with people's heads and there's not necessarily a nefarious motive behind it although I suspect there may be but uh, I, I mean there's certainly some at least some whimsy one little bit whimsy um, assuming it's not all 100% uh, algorithm generated. Um, whoever the author is, I think has a sense of humor, at least. Um, 
to their credit. Uh, okay, so just a decent look at these walls, which don't really serve any purpose. Okay. So, for comparison, here is a similar area in Bolivia. So, uh, we see these compartments here, or these, this, uh, these rows of stone walls uh, coming off and in the surrounding area, um, not amounting to much uh, functionally. And then, basically the same exact thing with a slightly different look in Bolivia. Just stacked walls, roughly the same height roughly the same size of stone and just these irregular and sometimes regular polygons and rectangles of uh, stacked stones uh, basically covering uh, thousands of square miles just a vast vast area Bolivia and Peru uh, so uh, one little remark here. I know you've seen some of these images before. Some of these are repeat images. Uh, I'm just, um, there's quite a bit of new images in this video as well, so stick around. But uh, if you see images I've shown before, uh, hopefully it's not too annoying, but sometimes uh, I like to show, show things side by side or one after another just to drive a point home, like the similarity between these rectangles and these rectangles. Okay, anyway. Uh, so here's these hillsides. We're going to get a couple different views here. This is from a Brian Forrester video. Uh, it's called Atlantis in the Andes, if you want to look it up. And we see these walls, fairly haphazard and meandering. And another look here. And same best basic explanation as the Rogamhiri we are just looking at in... Uh, Israel and basically all the other stuff we've been discussing just same origin story I think just derby nonsense to uh, to bewilder um, I could just imagine someone at the controls like snickering <laughs> for millennia like just look how dumb they are they can't figure out that they're in a um, a nonsense machine like a, a a never-ending nonsense generating ant farm something like that uh, not that that's the best explanation or way of phrasing it but something like that okay um, so here we're gonna get a view um, descending down from a drone and here we see the rock up close so zooming back up we see what the segments look like from above. Keep in mind this is a fisheye lens, I think. And then just the, again, the nonsensical, um, the haphazard or uh, no real rhyme or reason to it. Certainly no function in my opinion. I mean, I the walls are too low to really do much. Uh, I mean, maybe shield crops from the wind or something like that. You know, I guess you could make a case that these are ancient farms or something, but I doubt it. Okay, and I might as well touch on the how. Like, how do I think these were placed here? Or maybe even who? Um, who is more difficult? How, I would say, just with some kind of drone device, um, like, a, like a stone stacking, um, or like some type of universal labor robot, and... My conception of robot is probably much clumsier than what was used here. Um, and uh, when I say drone, I don't mean the little thing with the propellers that was used to take this footage. I mean, uh, just like a, what would look to us like magic, just like an orb floating around and we would just see a, a cloud of rocks like magically arranging um, into these... Uh, carefully calculated stone walls so it would be a fairly effortless thing for advanced technology to just stack these rocks up maybe even just in an afternoon or a couple minutes or probably a couple years at most um, but yeah that's what I think I don't think it was done by human hands if it was then I would 
if it was done by human hands, then I would have to jump to the conclusion that a portion of our psyche is hijacked <laughs> by something which can literally like drive our behavior without us knowing it. So that's in the off chance that this was all done by hand, which I, I doubt. Okay, so just moving on, look at the rocks. The rocks look pretty normal, I guess. You know, just like regular rocks. Um, not a whole lot to say. They could be fabricated rocks or they could be natural. I, uh, I don't have any strong opinions on that in this particular area. I don't know why I took a screenshot of the dirt, but just see the dirt and the smaller rock fragments. General landscape, we see the large uh, portioned um, segments of land uh, broken up by the walls. And this is the uh, Brian Forster, the guy who took the video. And, um, this is the video if you want to look it up, Atlantis in the Andes. It's only about eight minutes, I think, or yeah, seven minutes. So uh, apparently these are like ancient coral deposits, but I, the walls themselves are obviously not that. Okay. And probably overkill here, maybe more than you need to see, but just a few different looks at the different variations on them. This may be like a modern uh, restoration or uh, just leisurely uh, for fun uh, rebuild of this little wall portion or to house chickens or something, who knows. But this stuff over here is certainly just artificial weirdness, nonsense, bewilderment, shizzle. Okay, more of the same basically. Nothing new. All right. More. Whole bunch of it, obviously. And going up the hillside here. And how long has this been here? Man, I couldn't tell you. I really don't know. So here's what it looks like from a pretty high distance or high altitude in Google Earth. Just. Um, segmented squared shizzle we've seen this before we've also seen it before in uh, peru the lake titicaca area pretty vast vast area and if you just take if you just took like five minutes and really got into detail and looked at some of these contours and uh, paths i think you'd come to the conclusion that uh, this is really not a um, uh, functional operation here. We've got these weird wavies and uh, large large portions, small portions or polygons, rectangles, weird uh, wavy meanders and um, not really adding up to anything and by design in my opinion. Okay so let's jump to South Africa. Basically very similar style so there's some speculation that the South Africa stone circles are like, or Africa in general, the stone circles are like cymatic patterns for like sonic purposes or energy harvesting of some kind, like ley lines or if you're into that, or, uh, you know, um, nodal points like in the globe or something like that in the Earth's magnetic field, like to harness energy or... Um, even as like corrals for like to just dump Anunnaki gold in from gold mining or something like that. Uh, but uh, I, in my opinion, the, the final analysis is that uh, these are designed with uh, many different potential uh, different explanations, uh, some com complementary, some contradictory, baked into its design. So it's designed such that it could be perceived as uh, cymatics uh, or like a resonant pattern or, or built by hand or built by something else or, you know, built by humans, built by aliens. And the rock piles look like they could be for burial. You know, it's supercharged for multiple possible explanations in uh, a very particular way, which I would have trouble replicating. Um, 
but I can call it like I see it. You know, I can, we can all notice certain designs, but it doesn't mean we can repeat the design. Um, I'm just thinking like in the in the sense of like a interior design like in a house we can all recognize a well-designed house or like the the artistry behind it but that doesn't mean we can do it so just I mean I, I I couldn't necessarily design something like this although I could probably get pretty close now that I've looked at so many of these things <laughs> you just kind of derp it out and slap some features together you know it might not be that sophisticated I would say even the rocks in the background here, maybe a similar story. Okay, let's uh, let's keep moving. I think this is this might be Michael Tellinger. He talks a lot about the cymatic aspect of it. Um, uh, okay, so basically what I'm saying is most of the explanations for these stone circles are not valid in my opinion. They're just n uh, nothing burgers or nonsense patterns. <clears throat> so there you have it. Um, and we will just, I'll try and cruise through these a little bit quicker because it's basically this, <clears throat> they're all the same, just different variations on the same thing. So yeah, nothing really to point out. It's one, you know, we might suspect it's for like livestock or something, but for that, the walls are too low, I would say. And we also have mounds over here, which what are those? And then lines, of course. So this one, I, I think I broke this down pretty well in a previous video. I can't remember which one, but like this path is looking like something, but it's not really anything. Same with these circles in the middle. It's like they're almost architectural, almost, uh, almost ca uh, like livestock corrals, but like almost a, a house or like a former house, but not quite. And then the, the most interesting part of this is the, uh, the bleed into the surrounding landscape. Like the structure doesn't end here and, or, or here. It's uh, this as well, this, like all these subtle, like more subtle um, segments here are part of the same thing. So it's just kind of f merging with the landscape or emerging out of it. Just, it's more abrupt here, but it continues here. And basically same thing here. This is a particularly well-known area. I forget what it's called, but uh, coordinates here, if you really want to look it up. Um, yeah, just, so I think this is uh, a photograph of this area, which is a Google Earth satellite photo. So this is what they look like up close. And obviously it's derp salad, in my opinion. Just herky-jerky nonsense. Um, what was never functional. And basically, if you look at like this one, this is Jordan now. And if you look at like one of these or one of these, you can basically see the same uh, intent or design behind it or design principles at least. And so I like doing these little A, Bs in the similar areas. So I'm fairly certain this is by the same project uh, or author or agenda. And uh, here's what they look like. Many of them just um, fairly uh, variegated patterns. This one, these, a lot of different variations, but all amounting to not much of anything, um, but uh, but nonsense. And then the landscape I'm suspecting is sculpted as well. That's just me, but like all this, this crud. Okay, so we're gonna see quite a few images of Jordan now. So let's just check them out. Um, this one, a lot of them have this look to it, uh, which could be uh, construed as an animal trap. Like you drive a herd of, who knows, rabbits or buffalo or whatever. Um, a herd of rabbits. Uh, I don't know if that's a thing. But, uh, and then you corral them 
and it gets narrower and narrower and then they get trapped here. Problem with that is these walls are way too low. They're like a foot or two high. So that even, even a rabbit could hop that. Um, uh, but, uh, and also the scale of it. And then also the, the many nonsensical variations, which do not fit that explanation like this, just randomly here, uh, all the other stuff, the random walls and grooves and uh, just rock distributions everywhere, just random circles and patterns. So again, that's just one possible explanation, like an animal trap or a, a hunting trap or hunting aid, but it's not very likely in my opinion. There's no real consensus on these as to what they are, and that's because they're not anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like this, kind of looks like art, kind of looks functional almost, but there's too many random lines for it to be functional. So, you know my hypothesis, uh, derp salad. Okay, so half decent look at it there. And this is looking similar, but it's a different, uh, different circle, different location. Um, a lot of them have a very similar look, but are all they're all tweaked out in their own particular ways. Um, see all these haphazard uh, variations and offshoots and whatnot. Okay, not a whole lot more to add that I haven't haven't said already. So I'll try to just zip through as, as fast as I can. And here's an example of. Just random curves, non-functional, just chilling out here. Uh, uh, so again, the, the whole lost civilizations thing, like this is the remnants of advanced civilization. No, I don't buy that at all. Uh, I don't think it's the byproduct of any industrial operation. Uh, although I suppose that's possible. Uh, fairly grainy look here, one of the little nublets not particularly good image. Uh, yet another one here. I think this is from an airplane or something. And here we see good comparison of three of them. Just the derpy tweaked out nature of them just morphed and see, see how haphazard and uh, shit showy this one is. So, I mean, this is not any kind of hunting device or trap or corral or that's uh, it's not the footprint of a, a base camp or a, a settlement. It's nothing, basically. And, oh, like the, the whole uh, astronomical alignments thing or depictions of the stars or anything stu superstitious like that. I don't buy that either, especially because of the scale and also just the nonsense of it. Um, so this is the name of the video I got all these screenshots from. If you want to check it out, hopefully I'll remember to link these videos in the description. But uh, there, you can just Google that if I forget. New Earth Channel. And I think we got about 20 more images from Jordan. So I'll just scroll through these. And obviously you get the picture. This one looking much more ordered. And the appearance of order and chaos within the same domain. Uh, AKA the domain of the circle phenomena in the same general area is uh, yet another um, smashing together of uh, dissonant attributes or things that don't add up. So this tells a slightly different story than something like this or this just because it's much more ordered, um, albeit uh, nonsensical. It's looking much more precise. So that is one variation that could potentially throw off an investigator. However, not if you are aware that um, that, that dynamic and that strategy is in, in play or employed. So the, uh, the more polished look to some of them is uh, strategic or more, moreover, or uh, more importantly, the uh, the appearance of both polished and less polished designs is a strategic way of creating an overall um, mismatch 
or uh, an overall uh, <clears throat> effect of uh, not adding up, not amounting to any coherent story. So here are just random dots and look kind of like a kite. Or, yeah, they call these Jordan kites. Like these shapes are kind of like kites, so they call them kites, even though we can only say the word kite loosely because the shapes are so weird. Uh, here we see just piles of stone, and again, very low walls, not really doing much functionally. And um, it's also, we have like the more patchy, worked over look to this area, or like the these uh, patchy gaps in the rock. Cause it's a very rocky area to begin with, and we have these patchy gaps. And I think that's yet another deception, like we're, um, hmm, there's multiple ways of thinking about it. Like one, we could think this is the result of some kind of terraforming like I talk about, or some kind of surface mining, or any number of industrial operations, or um, some type of significant uh, activity in the past. Uh, however, uh, it may be more likely that it's just yet further nonsense patterns, just a slightly different style. So we have this, and we have this over here, two different styles, but um, so basically telling potentially two different stories, but like uh, look at this wall here, like for example, check out this wall, like we see it extends out of this as a feature, so we have a kind of like a path here and it continues along like as the the wall of this or this edge of it and then it kind of fades into this um it might just be a footpath to be honest but if it's like integrated into the design of this part and and this part then we see like a a sharing of a feature between two uh, different aesthetics so that basically links them I mean not to not to mention the fact that they're right next to each other um, but sometimes you'll see that like a feature shared by two different things uh, this, I mean these I don't think these are foot trails I think it's just like a rock wall so I think that is a legit point I'm making I mean, certainly at least a few of these are like animal trails and human trails and stuff, but uh, dirt roads and whatnot. But I think for the most part, it's just more nonsense patterns. Okay, let's continue. Yet another variation, potentially modern work, mining or surface work of whatever. We see, obviously, obviously see a modern road right here and some other modern stuff, but stuff like this I think is older and yet more weirdness so here's what it looks like up close basically fairly similar to uh, South Africa and to Peru and what was the first place we looked at oh Rogam Hiri in Israel uh, one sec drink of water and we see these segments up close like just what they look like so I mean does it look like a former house or housing settlement it's not much not much of one wouldn't protect you from the rain <laughs> wouldn't uh, wouldn't protect you from animals does it look like a corral or a, a fence of some kind again th this wouldn't even hold a, a five week old bunny rabbit so I can't you can't really make that argument it wouldn't hold chickens, it wouldn't hold anything. Um, at best, it, it could like block some of the wind from uh, farming or whatever, like for agriculture or uh, growing crops or whatever. Uh, or we could make the argument that uh, this area was being farmed and then to clear the, the land here or just this little patch for the crops they moved the rocks out to the edge. They just picked them up and lifted them and walked a, walked a few feet and moved the rocks to the edge. That is possible. Um, 
doesn't seem likely. The patterns are too weird, and there's too much of it. It's just way too big. Well, I guess there's the artistic expression uh, uh, explanation as well. Like somebody, I mean, what would you do if you were like a early man, like three or four thousand years ago? I guess that's not super early, but around the time this was built, like there's nothing to do. There's no internet. There's no um, real entertainment. So, I mean, maybe you would just walk around stacking rocks for your whole life. And I mean, if you did that for decade after decade and multiple people and maybe a whole culture doing that, I, I mean, I guess you might make this type of a dent in the landscape. Um, I mean, certainly like a stacked rock pile. Yeah. I mean, you might spend an afternoon doing this, but would you spend your whole life like reconfiguring thousands of square miles? I, I highly doubt that. Um, but again, that's kind of a moot point because it's, I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate, trying to exhaust all the options or all the conventional explanations when I think the explanation is quite obvious at this point, um, or at least the, the direction that the expl explanation lies in. Um, the theme of it. Okay, so we have stacked rocks, we have rock walls, we have rocks scattered. And again, the origin of the rocks in the first place, uh, that's up for debate. I don't really have a strong opinion on that because there's no real way to know. Um, so just a good look at the, the rock scape. Just uh, see the size of the rocks relative to a person. And the whole vast countryside is just littered with loose rocks like this. I'm not sure what the conventional geological history of the area is, but um, I, don't, I, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if this is just, uh, this is all placed here, like plopped here, like almost, almost clumsily or almost blatantly um, by some kind of high tech. Okay, so just a few more looks here. The uh, weird segments and uh, just haphazardness. Okay, here's one going off in the distance. Obviously, no real function to it. And just the shapes, the little circle, subtle compartments. And all computer-generated nonsense for the most part, and or doodling by a five-year-old or someone pretending to draw like a five-year-old. Um, yeah, something like that. Something along those lines. Uh, okay, sorry, I, I tend to take a few too many screenshots. Um, it's I know it's a little overkill sometimes, but hopefully I'm being... Uh, thorough as well. So the rocks, decent look at the rocks. Yeah, they might may be natural. There's a chance there are, that they're artificial, but I can't really say I see anything in particular that makes these makes me think these rocks are fake or manufactured or anything like that. So they may be legit rocks. It's just the, the placement is not legit. So here we see along the roadside. And of course, there's the question how deep into the Earth's crust do these patterns go? And this is what the a cross section of the uh, terra firma or Earth, um, earthy dirt layer, the top layer looks like. And it's got a, it's very rocky, obviously. So there's plenty of material to work with for sure. Now, whether this was all placed there artificially as well, who knows, that's really, I don't think we could make any progress on that. Uh, okay, so just a few last looks here at Jordan, then we will move on. So haphazard, various looks, many variations, some fainter, some more prominent, some stacked taller, some in lines and uh, paths like this, just branching derpness, um, all painting a confusing picture because it's meant to confuse, something like that. Okay, Jordan, 
Dur -dur -dur. <laughs> yeah, this is yet another variation on the basically the same type of deal. Got some of the same features like the little nublets and stuff, or those little small circles, uh, and along with the patchy pattern and it's kind of blotchy some of it some like the, the blotchy circles and then also the the rectangular more path like look to it but not not remains of any legitimate activity in my opinion okay um so peru let's jump over there and just a couple images here basically the same deal just up in the mountains here stone circles i mean not much to say, it's just the same thing basically around the whole world. So, I mean, the temptation is to say, oh, it's around the whole world. So it hints at uh, a global civilization, right? And I would say not so fast. Um, I think that is like one level, that's just one small level up from the deception itself. Like that is part of the deception, the, the idea that this is all from uh, a past bygone era or bygone era of or, or, uh, uh, phase of civilization. This is not the remains of Atlanteans or anything like that, but strictly for the reason that it doesn't make any sense. It's not, this is not legitimate buildings. Like, um, it's just derpy nonsense. Uh, <clears throat> so anytime you hear people um, touting the uh, ancient or remains of ancient uh, civilizations angle too much, um, I would say be suspicious. Although I've certainly uh, been down that road and sounded that horn or tooted that horn uh, many times uh, before I uh, explored this angle. So... Um, yeah, this, this is not uh, Egyptians, transatlantic Egyptians, or whatever. This is um, derp salad. Okay, let's keep cruising. Peru, yet another look here, variation. So we have multiple different variations. Just a small patch of derp here, and then also more uh, different style of derp, but still derp. We have the little mounds or little rock piles and so multiple styles of it. Okay. Sorry, scroll foul. Um, and then one more time, one more look at this image in uh, Peru. So same thing as Jordan, basically just a slightly different variation on the aesthetic of it, the patterning. Okay. Syria, same basic thing. So uh, again, a va pretty vast area, and there's the mounds or rock, uh, like bumps as I'm calling them, which are basically just piles of rock and or uh, like paths are carved around, like leaving some round area uh, remaining. So it looks like this whole area is uh, carved up uh, possibly as some kind of resurfacing or reset and possibly as some kind of uh, deliberate nonsense of some kind and uh, so I'll leave the explanation out of it for a minute just because I've already hit on it like 50 times but uh, yeah we see the walls extending between these outcrops of rock so it's like this is one of those areas where the uh, the alleged natural areas are kind of intertwined with the uh, artificial structures, aka these uh, stone walls. So here's like a more prominent stone wall, then here's a less prominent one, but the same thing basically. And it's just kind of blends in and uh, is part of the landscape here. So, uh, yeah. And some of these may be modern. Um, okay, so on that note, let's check out uh, South Sudan. Basically, same thing. So South Sudan still just a zoom and blotchy stone circles. 
deliberate nonsense in my opinion. Molly, basically the same thing. Ethiopia, basically the same thing. And, um, okay, so Ethiopia, Mali, and South Sudan. I would say these examples, uh, some of these do pop up as modern uh, in the historical photos in Google Earth, as you may have seen in one of my previous videos. Uh, I know Ethiopia for sure, some of these are modern. However, I'm 50-50 as to whether that's like legitimate modern work, uh, like farming or whatever, or whether it's an ongoing um, rollout of whatever is creating all the weird patterns on Earth's surface. So um, it's still it's still up for debate as far as I'm concerned. Like, is this the best way to build a corral for animals or uh, or a patch of land for farming or something like this? Like, it's just it's too blotchy and derpy to. Uh, to be conventional activity, in my opinion. Not to mention that it doesn't look like there's much going on here. So it's just like odd pattern after odd pattern, with the exception of these patchy uh, bits of land in some of these, which uh, leads you leads us to believe that uh, they're uh, utilized in some capacity. So, so they may be functional to a degree, and. Uh, even weirder, they may be both um, functional in a conventional sense and serving the function of uh, looking weird for future beholders <laughs> in the event that there's some ongoing un uh, script un unfolding. So keep that in mind. Okay, so this is a fun one. The Berkeley Mystery Walls. I like areas like this. This is in California, Berkeley, California, in, in and around the uh, San Francisco Bay area. And um, I like looking for stuff in California, number one, because it's my uh, home state, and number two, because uh, allegedly California is like newer to settlement. It's, it shouldn't have all the, the ancient stuff, so it's, it's cool when you can find something. And these, according to what I was reading, they've basically been here uh, as long as people have. Uh, it's nobody really knows who built them or how they got here. And that's about it. They're just walls that are mysteriously in the landscape. And a few points I'll make. Uh, number one, the varied look of it, like just kind of haphazard and taller in some places, shorter in others, and the rock kind of uh, falling off to the side and we have these uh, more natural looking outcrops of rock and I, th I would say it's not quite clear whether these uh, these top bits or these wider um, wider portions whether they are part of the wall effort or whether they're a feature of the landscape which uh, is just happens to be along the path of the wall that was being built and um, once again, I think that's a fairly straightforward answer, for me at least. Uh, I'm going to say that the wall itself is not really functional, or um, that's not its main intent. It's more as like a prop or a, uh, um, a placeholder or just context um, or like a rich backdrop for... Uh, for the landscape or for whatever earth is used for. And uh, this may be like a deliberate clue or something like um, just kind of how it fans out here. Like I think this portion of it over here is probably built by the same people who did this portion of it over here. And it's just, this is yet another derpy variation for uh, no particular functional reason other than uh, perhaps bewilderment. Okay, so here's what it looks like up close. Decent look at the rocks and the surrounding hills. Okay, cool. Pretty good look here. And uh, not much to say. Looks very similar to all the other walls we've seen throughout this video so far. And once again, I can't really say there's anything in particular that 
uh, on most of these rocks, which would give them away as like fake or manufactured, uh, with the exception of some that we'll see in a minute. So right here, I would say we're starting to look like maybe one or two percent uh, suspicious to me, like just subjectively some slightly strange, like just very subtle, slight subjective uh, feel to it, like almost like a lumpy megalith or something like that, you know what I mean? So uh, feature salad is the answer to that. And here's another one where the, the wall uh, bleeds into this wider outcrop area where there's just a bunch of scattered rocks. And of course it's a question of was that scattered rocks area there before? And then some of those rocks were taken and used to build this wall. Um, okay. And not a great zoom here, or not great resolution, but same basic thing. And no one really knows how they got there. Uh, this is the first image once again, and just the scattered rocks off to the side. Did they topple over off of the top? Um, I don't think so. And uh, one more time I'll repeat, I do not think this is the remains of some legitimate ancient civilization activity. Not that there wasn't legitimate activity in the area whenever this was built or, or earlier or whenever. Um, like some kind of high te like higher civilization or something like that. That's certainly possible. Um, however, I don't think this is the remains of that. I think this is a, a deception or a plumbus uh, at least partly, or like a, a derpy uh, placeholder or prop. It's, it's like a big question mark on the landscape. Like, hey, what am I? What am I? Can you figure me out? Um, yeah. Okay, here's a great... Uh, image for two reasons. One, uh, we get a look at the uh, quote natural rock and here we see almost a wall-like feature but uh, it's part of the hillside seems to be so this would be natural uh, rock presumably although I'm questioning the naturalness of the whole hills and obviously the whole landscape as well like the whole mountain system I question whether that's natural uh, but we see the wall. And then here's uh, the other reason I like this image is that uh, these images or these rocks in the foreground, I would say these are looking five or 10% block like. So some of these creases and cracks, I would say are just um, regular enough that they're striking me as uh, not natural layers or not uh, not natural rock, but rather um, almost artificial, like masonry features or joins between blocks. So like this is almost a megalithic block, <laughs> but not quite. So again, feature, feature salad, Morphe, Morphe uh, tweaked out uh, uh, modified, I'm trying to think of synonyms, um, yeah, just warpy and modified. I'm looking here, anything, oh, these are looking kind of weird, hard, nah. unfortunately, not a great angle. Okay, uh, so this is the, the big uh, nail in the coffin for me, or the uh, smoking gun for this area this uh, particular rock. Um, I mean, I guess the patterning, yeah, it could be natural, uh, certainly. However, um, okay, and, and this little divot here, and then these wavy things, these grooves, obviously looking fairly derpy, and then some of the wall in the background. But uh, keep this guy in mind. And then let's look at this place, you know, Stonehenge. So we have right up on the tops of these, these top pieces are called lintels. And uh, 
some of them looking more precise and some of them looking quite derpy uh, and tweaked out and uh, morphed. So this uh, rippled look here, which we see on several of them in slightly different variations, like we see it almost emerging from underneath uh, overlapping rock here, which is fairly strange to begin with. And here, uh, some kind of rippled look to it, not to mention all the other weird uh, angles and um, contours on the Stonehenge blocks, which I think are almost entirely manufactured or at least uh, artificially warped beyond recognition. So this is basically the same thing as that. So the Berkeley walls in California are basically just made by the same people who did Stonehenge and not superstitious, high-tech, uh, lost civilizations. Um, that's not it. The ancient lost high technology thing, um, I'm, I mean, not that this wasn't made with high-tech, but it's not legit activity by a legit civilization. It's, uh, it's some kind of uh, fake uh, kit of deceptive uh, sites. So here's another look at the ripples at Stonehenge, not to mention these holes everywhere and the uh, uh, cavities or uh, divots, indentations, strange angles everywhere. Um, so yeah, these ripples. And then the ripples are also seen at Dudo Stern, sorry, Dudo Stone Circle in Northumberland, England. So let's check these out. We've got Yet another rippled pattern, slightly strange look to these rocks here, and uh, I mean, these ones look more natural, but I would say they're probably still not natural, uh, especially since uh, in the next image this is still Dudo uh, Stone Circle in Northumberland, England, and we have this one which looks like a giant foot, incidentally or it has some attributes of what we might perceive to be uh, a giant petrified foot or something like that, like big toe, next toe, next toe, something like that, uh, the arch of the foot. So this is like, in my opinion, this is just, uh, once again, a feature hodgepodge. Uh, so it's it straddles that line of multiple possible interpretations in a uh, non big nonsensical soup. God, I feel like I'm repeating myself way too much, but it's the same explanation for basically everything. So some, sometimes it drives the point home more when you see one particular example over another. Um, like even I get surprised sometimes I'm like, oh, that site is part of it too? You know, like Machu Picchu or Stonehenge. So I think it really drives it home when you see example after example of the same type of thing at all these sites that we thought we understood or had some grip on. So, uh, so yeah, Stonehenge has the ripples, uh, Dudo Stone Circle has the ripples, and along with this uh, rock, which is, in my opinion, uh, deceptively made to look like it has foot-like features, but is not in any way actually related to a foot or a body part. Um, and then also in Idaho, you may have seen me show this one a couple times before, the same ripples at the top of this rock. And you might make the case that that's natural. I might even agree. Uh, certainly looks awkward, but not inconceivable that it could be natural, you know, just rippling water erosion or whatever. However, in the same general area with more blatant stuff like this, and some other goofy stuff I didn't uh, drag in here to the slideshow, but these um, grooves here, I would say, are more blatant and of a different quality. And I think they at least give some con contextual understanding or uh, circumstantial evidence to, uh, to the ripples nearby. So basically anywhere that's rocky <laughs> has, anomalies like this and again sometimes I, I feel like these just popped out of nowhere like why didn't I know about this when I was 20 you know or like 10 or 15 years ago 
uh, like, was it always like this? Or did this stuff just like slowly phase into our reality? So a lot of weird questions that go along with this. Cause I mean, it's pretty obvious stuff. It's it, like, it seems like it should have been pointed out. Like this, this guy probably didn't know about it until recently as well. This dude with this camera. So I mean like, when did all this show up? Or has it really been there? Like right under our noses for thousands of years and then, or longer. And then we only noticed recently just because of the internet, making it so easy to A, B uh, and compare things quickly um, and draw connections and conclusions. It could be just the internet accelerated our discovery. But yeah, one more look here at this um, place in Idaho with the ripples and the grooves here. And then this is a rock from the Berkeley stone walls. So California's got the weirdness as well. And one more look here at this potentially partially megalithic or um, quasi megalithic wall in quality um, alongside the complementary uh, second aesthetic of just purely stacked rocks. And I say complementary because those two or three different styles that we see all paint uh, slightly different stories and that uh, that co-occurrence of or coexistence of different stories in the same general area all kind of mashed together is part of the big head spin or um, uh, bewilderment behind it all. Okay, so I think that is the last image in this slide show. Um, I guess the last thing I'll leave you with is that it's not just the stone walls and stone circles and geoglyphs that are artificial um, but rather they they may be hints and also parts of the same uh, general tactic or uh, manufacturing rollout which uh, terraform the whole landscape as well and then this is just a more blatant clue of that and I guess I'll also reiterate one more time that I do not think that any of this is the remains of some legitimate structures from some legitimate civilization. Okay, uh, that is it for this one. And then in the next video, we will look at more stone walls and possibly some uh, geoglyphs as well. So uh, check that one out. All right, I'll see you later.